Both side eat, both side eat. Oh my god. This is not only my favorite fish ever, but it's also known as the striped bass. Oh, he's got it. That was so cool. The beauty of Maine and one of the reasons why I move up here in the summertime is because at one point in the week, you might find yourself in the back of a creek throwing a little dry fly that is about this size. And then the next day, you might end up on a river chasing giant striper, throwing a lure about this size. There's so much diversity up in this big, northern, beautiful state. The fish that we're after today travels all the way from the Atlantic Ocean, miles and miles up the river, only to be caught, hopefully, by us today. Before we get things kicked off, I wanna do a little gear rundown. Those of you who are interested can watch this. If you're not, skip to, well, I'll leave it annotated down there. But I wanna show you guys some of these giant lures that we'll have tied on today. Now granted, we may not catch fish on everything, but I, I have a good feeling that, that at least a couple of these are gonna produce. What we're after is a fish that is actually a saltwater species, but we're going to find and chase them down in a freshwater river system. This river is fresh, but it is tidal, and there's about a 10-foot tide swing. We're uh, hopefully gonna get ourselves into high tide and fish that outgoing. But with that, we're gonna throw some giant aggressive lures because the fish that we're chasing after today are after bait that is anywhere from nine to 10 inches long. For example, we're gonna be throwing big paddle tails with heavy lead heads, about an ounce and a half. Of course, the big nine inch spook, which I showed you guys earlier, huge hooks, huge split rings. These fish could be anywhere from 28 inches all the way up to 45 inches. That is a behemoth. I'm gonna snap around a spoon as well. This is a literal piece of dinner hardware. Absolutely nuts. And then also, we might get a little creative and throw around what is traditionally green bass swim baits, but will also work really good for the fish that we're chasing. Just as a backup, we do have some smaller spooks, but this is the amazing thing about Maine. Everyone who comes here thinks of guys wearing plaid shirts, uh, a nice Elmer Fudd hat, and throwing a dry fly in like a two inch creek. But that's not what it's all about. You can do everything from getting a little bit of largemouth and smallmouth, but then also going into these, you know, coastal systems and chasing after megas. So without further ado, I'm gonna shut up, get everything organized here, and we'll uh, meet you guys out on the river. Get it. Welcome to the river, the land of giants. Fingers crossed. We're gonna start things off with something a little crazy. The banana spook, nine inch banana spook. We're going big, we're going home. The tide is coming out right now. The current is absolutely shredding. It can be really good for these aggressive fish. Oh, I got one under me. I got one under me. Big one. <laughs> that was crazy, dude. Another one. See it? Got one on me. Got a bogey on me. Oh, I'm running out of room. Come on, eat it right, both side. Both side. Golly, dude. <laughs> this is good. This is good. There's another one on it. Yeah, there is. Come on, come on, come on, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Come on. Oh, 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 got him! Got him! Yes! Let's go, baby! We got a river monster on. <laughs> that was so cool. I'm gonna let him take some drag. Can you believe a freaking fish just ate that banana spook? Woo! She's screaming too! She's a screaming! It is tough to get these fish in, even some of these smaller ones. This might be a decent fish. Not a giant, but a quality one, nonetheless. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Listen to that track. <laughs> this is why we woke up at 4 a.m. to catch the perfect tide to come out here and throw giant lures. 
in the farthest northeastern state. It's nuts to think that these guys could have been, you know, 10 miles off the coast of the Atlantic Ocean, and now they're up in this river mingling with smallmouth and all kinds of other Maine creatures. Good fish, that took no time at all. We'll take them, quality bass, quality bass. Don't have to watch out for great whites in here. There we have it, look at that striper. <laughs> That's awesome, bro. We did it. There we have it, the first fish of the day and a quality one at that. I actually thought it was a little bit smaller. It is, oh, look at this. Take a look at that little guy in the back right there. That right there is sea lice. They'll make their way on a fish and they just hang on to their scales. For those of you who aren't familiar with this fish species, this is not only my favorite fish ever, but it's also known as the striped bass. They're an androgynous fish species, meaning they can survive in salt and fresh water. One of the reasons why you find them up in these rivers is because, well, striped bass do whatever they want. They're up here feeding, they're up here hanging out, looking for warmer water. And this river is absolutely full of food for these fish. And uh, one of the food that they're after is uh, alewives, which is similar in size to the giant banana spook we're throwing. Always make sure when you're putting these guys back that it's head first. You never want the, uh, the water to go backwards in their gills. This water's absolutely cranking right now. We're gonna see if she gives us a, a bit of a kick and then we'll send her on her way. It was a hell of a fight, so we wanna make sure she lives. Come on, old girl. There she goes. Kicked and she is gone. Whew. So just for reference, it took us probably five minutes to get the boat in the water, another 10 to get to the spot, and a good maybe seven minutes to get the first spot of the day. We're back on, I'm gonna take another cast. I've got my motor in spot lock mode, meaning that it is essentially keeping us anchored in this current. This current is, for lack of better words, absolutely humping right now. If you were to fall in the water, you'd probably end up in the ocean in, in two minutes. That's how, how much it's cranking, but these striped bass thrive in this fast moving water. But this is the lure. It's a banana spook. It's crazy. It's probably the most ridiculous thing you can throw for these fish. But something about the, the bright colors in this bait, whether it be yellow or white or black or something like that, and the way that this bait moves in the water above the surface is what gets these fish absolutely going. It's a walk the dog style bait. So it's going to kind of chop back and forth and back and forth. And to be honest, it doesn't really look like what a bait fish would look like on the surface, but it drives them nuts. I'm seeing some more on my graph. Let's see if we can get back after it. This is, in my opinion, the pinnacle of surface fishing. I got one on me already. All right, got one on me. Come on, baby. Oh, he wants it. Boat side eat, boat side eat. Oh my God. Oh, he's got it. That was so cool. Oh my gosh, that was so awesome. Right by the freaking boat, dude. A little bit small than the last one, but dude, when they're eating like that, it's it's just fun, no matter what. No matter freaking what. Oh, he's not that bad. He's just not putting up a crazy fight. Woo-hoo, woo-hoo. He's a little bit smaller. We'll take him though. All righty, in the boat she goes. Not a bad one at all. Another beautiful main striped bass. <sighs> My favorite fish ever. I know I say it every time we chase after them, but just to think you can catch them in lakes down in Texas, rivers in Maine, and of course on the coast of both the Pacific and the Atlantic. They're widespread throughout the United States and they are good, cheap fun. Send you back, old girl. All right. That looks promising. Oh yeah, come on. That's a good one. That's a good fish. That was sick. That was quite the eat. Oh my gosh, that seems like a good one. Big head shakes. Big head shakes. She's going down current. Oh man. Woo! Let's go, baby. Oh, that was a quick eat. Come on. Get her up into this current. Man, dude. Man, put these fish in some fast moving water. It is a whole nother game. Come here, pal. I got you. I got you. Whew. Oh, number three. Man, we are tearing them up today. Holy. Number three going back in the water. Thank you. There she goes. Kicked and she's gone. Whew. Whew. Oh, that's fun. There's a couple right below me. Let's see if I can snap it in the face. Oh, 
bottom. It sinks way faster than I thought. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. They're still here. Come on. I don't know if he's still on me. I'm going to pretend like he is. Wow, I haven't gotten a left side eat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's still on me. God, dude. Oh, he's got it. That was so dirty. Ah! That was so dirty, dude. He freaking threw that thing like 10 feet in the air and he finally ate it. Ah, how I love striper boys. Big spook. Big river stripers. Cannot beat it. Cannot beat it. It's a decent one. It's not too bad. Let's get him up over here. There we go. Come on. Come on, buddy. All right. Go for a quick tail grab. Come here. I got you. Oh, it's almost went in the river. I got you. I got you. Whew, not a bad one at all. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, you know, it's really all worth it waking up this early on a bit of a whim. I haven't fished this system in probably about a year. And every time I return, I've got these guys waiting for me. We may keep one of these fish today uh, just because they are amazing table fare and you can keep one slot fish up here in Maine. It has to be between, I believe, 28 and 35 inches. It's kind of nice. It's, it's good for conservation. You don't want to keep fish that are too big, and of course, you don't want to keep fish that are too small. We're going to put this guy on the bump and see how big he is. Well, this is definitely a slot fish. So this is a fish that we can keep. I'm not a huge fan of keeping striper, but you know, one every blue moon is not going to uh, absolutely decimate the system. And I've probably released a freaking 100 striper for every one that I've kept. You never know what you're gonna find on the river. I've fished this system probably a dozen times and I've ripped through here a dozen times and I've never noticed this sunken boat that just is like right on the bank. It's huge, it's like a 50 foot boat. It's humongous. It's got an old wooden hull too. I imagine this thing's probably, I don't know, probably 40 years old. If you guys are from the area, drop a comment, let me know. The oh, look at the ducks, oh my gosh. Were they going for my spook? You guys can't eat that. It's got hooks on it. Oh man, I'm glad you said something, Caleb, because I almost would have caught a, a duck and four stripers. Anyway, we want to pull off on the river before the tide gets too low and just show you guys something that I've never seen before. This is the, I guess, the perks of fishing urban spots is you just never really know what you're gonna stumble upon. It just makes you wonder like how something like this even got back here. Wow, oh my gosh. I've never seen this before. Hey, mom, get your babies. Please drop me a comment. Let me know if you know the story behind that. I, I think there's a couple other, but that's definitely the biggest one I've seen. And it's not like it's on the ocean. Like this is a river system. So in order for that to have ended up there, it would have been like a huge flood tide or a huge storm. And I mean, it probably would have had to have been very big. We're gonna try one more spot. Nice little creek that's coming out. We have a little bit of tide left. I'm gonna make the most of it. Oh my God, dude, there's like a hundred striper right here. Cast, cast, cast. There's a hundred striper right here. There's a hundred, there's so many, dude. Oh my God. Oh my God. <gasps> Did you see that, dude? Holy <laughs> Oh my God, I'm just, I just myself. There's one right there. Dude, that was, they, I just watched them like come up out of this, off the surface. That was insanity. That was insane. Let's fly some fish. That is not a bad fish.
Milo, what's this? Fishy. Fish. What do you touch him? Fish. Yeah? So good. Your dad actually can catch fish. Shocker, right? All right, we're gonna fly this guy for you, all right? <laughs> high noons and high tides equal a beautiful morning in Maine. This is probably the most Maine catch and cook that I've ever done. We've got a striped bass straight from the Penobscot River. We've got the Maine woods behind us. We're gonna flow this bad boy up. This is a, I believe a 29 and a half inch fish. So it was just an inch and a half over the slot size, you have to catch fish between 28 and 35 inches. It's one fish per day, which is awesome for Maine. We had the live hole running all day as this fish was gilled. So it was circulating all that blood out of there. And then as soon as we got back to the mainland, uh, we put some ice on those fish. That's very key. If you can put ice on it immediately after gilling it, that's the way to go. I will say I'm not the best at flaying fish. It's not something I practice a whole lot of, but uh, I'm gonna try my best. Usually these bigger fish is a little bit easy. And of course, as this will be up on YouTube, we won't be able to show the details of cleaning, but you get the idea. Bleeding a fish is super important, especially saltwater fish, because it, it actually diminishes that fishiness taste that uh, you may get when catching a striped bass. That's one of the main reasons I think why people say they don't like fish is because, you know, it's not handled properly, it's not filleted properly, and it's not prepared properly. It's not all about what kind of seasoning or how you cook it. It's how that fish is caught and what happens post-mortem. Look at that fillet. That's incredible. One of the best ways to get that full effect of, of a fish's flavor is to leave the skin on. It's important to descale a fish. I like using a little spoon and just kind of getting rid of some of those hard scales so that way it doesn't interfere with the overall experience of eating the fish. But keeping that skin on is important sometimes, especially with a sea run fish like this. Take a gander at that. This is our reward for waking up at 4 a.m. this morning, going out to the river, and making a couple casts. We caught four striped today, one of which we brought home, and we are now going to enjoy this fish, which we very much appreciate. That right there is enough for two full-grown idiots, myself and Caleb, and I think the other side will be perfect for Milo and Kaylee as well. We're gonna put this in the bowl, and work on the other side. Now, a lot of people, after they're done cleaning a fish, they just get their two fillets and that's it. But there is still a good amount of meat left on this fish. We're gonna see what the cheek meat looks like in a fish like this. I've never heard of anyone eating cheek meat out of a striped bass, but fish, for example, like grouper and walleye have really good cheek meat, and it's very comparison to like, you know, the firmness and the tastiness of a scallop. We got Chef Boy Armila over here. We've got our striped bass. We've got olive oil, some of the Kerrygold salted butter, pink Himalayan salt, some black pepper, some garlic powder, onion powder, chili, smoked paprika, and of course you can't forget the rosemary. Can you hold that for me? Thank you, appreciate it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up the seasoning for this fish. I'm going for something a little bit smoky, a little bit of, little bit of spice, but nothing too extreme for a, a gringo like myself. Only thing we forgot was some lemon. Lemon does cut a bit of that fishiness, but I am confident that our striped bass is not that fishy, just because of the way we handled it today. Uh, I have been wrong before, but we shall see. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take these four spices, put them in this tiny bowl, mix them up to the right ratio, and then we're going to cover our striped bass in some EVOO as Rachel Ray would say. And uh, we're gonna put it in the oven, crank that B at like, I think probably four, 450, and then might give it a nice little broil there at the end to kind of make it crispy on top. So like I said, I'm not a chef, I'm not a professional. I don't know what I'm doing, but hey, let's give it a shot. Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna lie. It looks good, it smells good. It kinda sounds good too. We're gonna do a quick taste test. I'm gonna try it, Kaylee's gonna try it, Milo's gonna try it, and of course, Caleb, who is filling right now, is also gonna try it. Got a nice, nice buttery, flaky crust on top, a little bit of rosemary, some butter. For you? For you? Well, her baby, her baby fork. Oh, sorry, baby fork. Oh, wait, we don't have them, they're dirty. Okay, big girl fork. That will do. Yay. Cheers. Let's give it a shot. It's 
It's probably gonna be kind of hot. I'll, I'll cool hers down. So this was also, this was caught this morning by yours truly. <laughs> and uh, I'm excited to see how it tastes. This is striped bass, by the way. From the Atlantic, but lives in, and don't, don't tell me your opinion yet. I'm, I'm gonna, not saying nothing. I'm gonna give Milo some too. Can, okay, I just, I just had a bite. Ooh, Ooh she went in. She's a picky eater too. <laughs> what do you think? She says, more, more. You want more? Is that not bad? I will say it's a rare occasion to see her eat something other than cheese, crackers, oh. or what else does she love? Strawberries. Strawberries, pack packs, pack packs, pack packs juice packs. Or yogurt packs, vegetable packs, fruit packs. I'm actually pretty proud. I feel good that she actually went in for an eat. So what do you think, what, Mama, what do you think? Mama says she's, she gave it a, I think for now a half thumbs up. What do you think? I give it probably a nine out of 10. Really? I you think like the it? lemon really would have been good on it. Yeah, I think so too. But it's not fishy though. It's not though. fishy at all. Right, yeah. I like the texture's really good too. I like it. So Kaylee is kind of more on the side of like not really loving fish, mainly because I mean, of the fishiness taste. No, I'm, but I'm earlier oh, yeah. I explained just like deer meat, so I don't like game meat at right. all. And I get that. So that I guess goes to show that we prepared it right, hopefully, because the very it is very easy to make. Sorry. Just wants a backpack. No backpack. Okay. I'll get a thumbs up from Kaylee, quarter thumbs up from Milo, which is good enough in my books. I think it tastes pretty good. The last person needs to try it, of course, is Caleb. I'm gonna give him a, a nice fork full right here. I'm gonna grab the camera and see what he thinks. How's that bite killed? An Opscar River striped bass. Thank you, I Is it good? <laughs> That's very good. Nice. That is fantastic. That's awesome. <laughs> well, huge shout out to the striped bass for not only biting our spook today, but also tasting good. Unfortunately, not as good as a pack pack, but we still got a bite <laughs> out of Milo. That might be the first time I've ever seen her actually eat fish, maybe? She At least that I've caught. Salmon. But not that you've caught them. No, This no. is the first catching hook. First time. So I'm now not only a proud angler, but I'm a proud father. So shout out to Kaylee and Myla and also Caleb for being a part of today's video. We are now going to feast, have some family time, some chill time. And I just want to say thank you guys for joining us on today's not only catching mission, but cooking mission. We appreciate the view. Drop a comment. Let us know if you guys want to see more of this. There is a myriad of fish species we can catch and also cook here in Maine. But uh, yeah, we're going to feast right now. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate the view and we'll catch you on the next one. As always folks, keep fishing, never stop. She's like, get that camera out of my face.